Hi, my name is Alistair Chapman and in this video I'm going to go through the exposure tools on this camera. This is Sony's AX100 compact 4K camcorder. Now one thing that always makes a picture look good is good accurate exposure and there are many ways of controlling your exposure with this camera. You can do it fully automatically using the program AE function. Just press program AE and the camera will take care of exposure automatically. There is also a touch to expose function where we can touch on the touch screen here to expose different parts of the image. And of course you have various degrees of manual control of this camera. Now just looking at the side screen of the camera here there are indicators for the aperture, for the camera's gain and for the shutter speed. And when we're in the full auto mode there is a little triangle with the A in it, a letter A for automatic next to each one of these. So when you see a symbol with an A in it, we are in auto exposure. And currently right now the camera is taking care of the exposure and doing a pretty good job of it. And in most cases it's absolutely fine. But you may find there are some situations where the camera is tending to either overexpose or underexpose a little bit. Well, in the menu, if we go into the camera menu and we go to the camera functions and we go down one page, you'll find there's a function called AE Shift. And this is Auto Exposure Shift. By turning this on, we can add an offset to the auto exposure. So if I go plus, we can make the exposure brighter by different amounts. And if I go minus, we can make the exposure darker by different amounts. I actually find it quite useful with this camera to use a minus 0.5 or 0.7 EV offset when shooting very bright scenes. Maybe an outdoor scene with a bright sky or something like that. I just find with a little slightly darker bias that the camera produces a better image. But that's up to you, but very easy to use the AE shift function. I'm just going to turn this back off so we don't get confused. Okay, so beyond AE uh, shift, how else can we control our automatic exposure? Well, back into the menu and we go back to this camera page again, there's a function here called spot meter. If I select this function, what the camera will do now is set, is set the exposure for the part of the scene or the part of the image that I'm shooting that I select by touching the touch screen. So if I touch here on a dark part of the background, you see the exposure will adjust for that dark part of the scene. If I touch here where it's a bit brighter, now the exposure will adjust for the brighter part of the scene. If I touch here for the foreground part, the exposure is being set for this area. So that's a really easy way to set your exposure uh, automatically. And once you've done that, um, when I click OK, the camera comes out of the auto exposure mode and it now goes to a manual exposure mode. If you look carefully, you see the little arrows here Instead of having an A in them now, they have the letter E. So when you see a little, little letter E here, the exposure is now no longer automatic. In fact, it's actually locked. So even if I uh, darken the image by placing my hand in the front of the camera, there's no change to the exposure. The exposure stays constant. If I want to change my exposure now, I either have to go back to full auto or use the auto functions either by pressing program AE or going back and using the spot meter function again, or I can now control my exposure manually by pressing the manual button, and now the little wheel on the front of the camera will control my exposure up and down, making the shot brighter or darker. So there is another variation of the spot meter function, and if I go into the menu and we go to the camera settings, you'll see here we have a spot meter stroke FCS function and that's spot meter and focus. So if I select this, if I touch here on this dark part of the screen on the background, the camera will focus here on the background and expose. So this does exposure and focus together. If I touch here, it's going to focus on the foreground and expose for this part of the scene. Now again, when I press OK, and we come out of this, the exposure is locked. We have a little E by each of these. So even if I introduce my hand, the exposure doesn't change. Make the picture dark, the exposure doesn't change. 
Now I can toggle between auto and manual by pressing the manual button. When I'm in manual, what you're going to see first of all is a grey box around the aperture, gain and shutter speed controls. When you see all three of these with a grey box and an arrow with an E next to it, it means that the total exposure of the camera is controlled by the little wheel on the front of the camera and the camera is going to choose which of these settings to adjust. So as I've gone very bright here you'll see that the gain of the camera has gone very high. Very high gain tends to make the pictures noisy. You don't really want to go above about 12 dB if you can help it. But then as I bring this down first of all the gain decreases and then once the gain gets to 0 dB which is the optimum we'll see that the shutter speed increases. So now the shutter speed is getting faster and faster to make the picture darker. So the camera is automatically deciding which settings to change to get the exposure. Now very often when you're shooting you want to set these settings at specific levels to get the very best results. And we can do that using the three buttons on the side of the camera for iris, gain and shutter speed. So when I press the iris, just the iris is going to change. And when I adjust the wheel, you'll see the iris setting changing. But you will also see actually that the gain and the shutter speed is also changing to compensate so that my exposure stays consistent, stays constant. If I want to fully manually control the camera, then what I need to do is to set ISO and set my ISO. I'm going to set my gain actually to 0 dB which is the optimum. You typically want the camera at 0 dB whenever possible. This will give you the best overall result. If you are shooting in low light you can raise the gain. Um, typically I don't like going above 12 dB of gain. It tends to get a bit noisy above that. So we're going to set the camera to 0 dB gain and then if I press the shutter speed button now this can be adjusted and set and shutter speed, well you want your shutter speed set ideally at a multiple of the local mains electricity cycle rate. So in PAL countries in Europe the mains electricity is 50 cycles so we want a shutter speed that ideally is a multiple of that so 1 50th, 1 100th. Uh, we want that because it prevents you getting flicker when you're shooting under artificial lighting. If you're shooting in an NTSC country the USA, parts of Asia, then you might want to set this to 60 or 1 60th because the mains frequency there is 60 cycles per second. But as I'm in Europe I'm going to set this to 1 50th. And now if I go back to Iris and actually what you'll see is the little arrow symbol has gone from each of these. So as you press the button first of all you have auto or if I press it again it's highlighted and I can change between them. When there is no arrow next to these symbols then the exposure control is entirely manual. So I have no arrows here so I have entirely manual control and each one of these settings I can set individually. So now I'm controlling the aperture. Now one thing that you may find with this camera is shooting outside is that on a very bright day, on a, in a bright scenario, the aperture may become very small. You might need to use a very small aperture. Now ideally you don't really want to use f10, f11 with this camera. Um, when you have a very small aperture the picture can become very slightly soft or look slightly defocused. This is something called diffraction limiting and all cameras suffer to this to some degree and it depends on the size of the sensor and the size of the pixels. With this camera really you want to avoid f11 and f10. So what can you do if you set your gain to its optimum setting, I'm just going to put it here to uh, 0 dB for argument's sake, and you find yourself at f11. Well this is where you can use something called ND filters. So on the back of the camera here we have some switches for controlling these ND filters. What are ND filters? Think of them as sunglasses for the camera. So much as you would put on a pair of sunglasses on a bright sunny day, you can also add in some ND, some filtration to this camera to reduce the amount of light that falls on the sensor. 
When you're shooting in auto, with auto exposure, the simplest way to use the camera is, is to set the ND switch to auto. If you're shooting manually, then really you should switch the ND to manual and then you can manually introduce different amounts of ND depending on how bright your scene is. And as you introduce more and more ND, the picture will become darker and darker, allowing you to open the aperture to its optimum value. Typically with the aperture, a good value is going to be between f5.6 and f8. That will normally give you the best from the lens. By using lots of ND, you can make the picture nice and dark, allowing you to open the aperture up very wide. And a wide aperture, maybe f3.4, allows you to have a shallow depth of field, where the difference in focus between the foreground and the background is much greater. That gives you a more filmic look. If you're going to use shallow depth of field, then really you should be driving this camera manually to get the very best from it. So ND filters allow you to control exactly how large or small your aperture is, depending on shutter speed and gain. Another feature that this camera has is the ability, when you're in auto exposure, to limit how much gain it will apply. So if I come out of manual now and I go to program AE, so I'm in full auto, if I deliberately make the picture dark by adding in lots of ND, you'll see that the gain of the camera has gone way up. It's actually gone to 27 dB. So the pictures are going to be very noisy, very grainy. You'll also actually see something to take note of here is that the ND symbol here says ND off and it's flashing. Now the reason it's flashing is that that's the camera telling you that you have too much ND. If I take the ND out, you'll see that the ND indication is solid. It doesn't flash. So whenever you see a flashing ND indication, it means this is the ND that the camera believes you should be using. I'm going to switch ND to auto here. When you're in ND auto, you don't get that indication at all because the camera takes care of ND automatically. So back to camera gain. So we can actually choose to limit how much gain the camera will apply when it's set to auto. So we don't get pictures that are too noisy and too grainy. And if I go into the menu, we go to the camera settings and we go down one page, you'll see that there is an AGC limit function. And this sets a cap, a limit to how much gain, how much noise the camera will add. And I find with this camera that really um, about 12 dB is about the sort of limit that I want to work with. Um, I don't like the pictures that with more gain than that because they get very grainy and noisy. So by setting the limit, I've chosen 12 dB, but you really need to experiment and decide for yourself what is your own personal limit. By setting the limiter to that, and you see there's a little symbol here that says AGC and a, a line above it that comes up when you're in the display mode, the camera won't add more than 12 dB gain. So if I now go and I add in lots of ND again, you'll see that the limit of the gain is hit at 12 dB and it won't go above that. And that's a really nice feature with this camera that really helps you to get very nice pictures in all kinds of shooting situations. Now when you're exposing either manually or automatically with this camera, there is a tool in the camera that helps you judge exactly how you are exposed. And if I go to menu, to camera, and we go to the bottom setting here, just click on this little logo here. This is the shooting assist page where all your uh, focusing aids and things like that are. And there's a function here called Zebra. And if I turn this on, what you'll see is you'll see there is like a Zebra pattern superimposed over the image on the viewfinder. Below here is the level setting. It's currently set to 70. So 70 is the typical brightness of a face or a person in an interview. If I introduce my hand into this shot now, you'll see that there is a bit of zebra on my hand. And that's a typical um, correct exposure when you're shooting people and faces and things like that. So if you want to check your exposure, if you're shooting an interview or shooting people or something like that with this camera, the zebra function set to 70 
and just a little bit of zebra on their skin. You don't want lots, you don't want it everywhere, just as you can see there, just a little bit on the brightest parts is going to be the correct exposure or very, very close to the optimum exposure for shooting a person and shooting an interview. You can also, if we go back to the zebra settings here, change the level of this. And another way to use zebras perhaps is to set them to 95. So that's 95%. And what this is going to tell you is it's going to make parts of the image that are very close to being overexposed quite obvious. And if you look here, you can see that these uh, bright reflections on the background have got a little bit of zebra on them, indicating that they are very, very bright and very close to or overexposed. So zebras are a really good way to check your exposure. And if we go to the 100% setting, anything that is actually overexposing will have zebras on it. So again, we can see we have this zebra pattern over these very bright parts of the image. So we can use zebras to check for overexposure using either 95 or 100 percent, or we can set zebras to 70 percent and use it to check that faces, people, skin, stuff like that is exposed in the right sort of part of the uh, exposure range. So a very useful exposure tool with this camera. So there you have it, full auto controls, touch screen controls for auto, and full manual control of exposure with this camera. It's really very flexible when it comes to exposure control.